Hey everyone, so iPad OS 17 came out quite recently, and with this update came many new features, so in this video I'll be explaining to you whether or not you should get it on the iPad Air. So first off, let's talk about the lock screen. So you'll see that the lock screen actually got a whole new redesign, and this is sort of like the redesign on the iPhone with iOS 16. So if I hold the wallpaper on the iPad, then you'll see that I'll be brought to this customizing menu. And when I press on this, you'll see that there's going to be a whole new wallpaper gallery, sort of like the one on the iPhone. And what's different from the iPhone is that when I press on customize, you'll see that all the widgets actually got moved to the left side of the screen. And you could also select between 4 to 16 widgets here. And when you customize the clock, you'll see that there's going to be actually a lot more customization here. Now another feature Apple added with iPadOS 17 are these interactive widgets here. And basically they allow you to use a widget without actually opening the app. And this feature doesn't work very well right now, but once the update is released, it should work a lot better. And with iPad OS 17, Apple actually added a couple new apps to the home screen. And first off, there's a health app, which was previously only available for the iPhone and iPod Touch. And there's also a new app called Journal, which basically allows people to store some of their past memories and some of their photos. And right now in iPad OS 17 beta, the app isn't released yet, but once the update is out, we should know more about it. Now this next feature is actually useful for people who are new to iOS. And basically, if you go into settings, then into accessibility, you'll see that when you scroll down to here, there's a new feature called assistive access. And there's also the option to set it up. And over here, it says that assistive access provides an alternative iOS experience. Essential apps have been redesigned to be larger, share the same style, and have fewer features. So in summary, Apple's gonna make the iPadOS interface easier to use, just in case if some of you find it complicating. Now in settings, there's another feature for Safari. Basically, when you go into the Safari section and you scroll down to here, you'll see that there's profiles. So over here, it says profiles help keep your Safari info separate, like favorites, histories, and tabs. And for example, I have two profiles here, one for work and one for home. And you could also create a new one by pressing on new profile. And for example, we could title this one school. And over here, you can also customize the icon and the color of the icon. And there's also basic settings you could change. And once you're finished, just press on save. And then to change the profile, just go into Safari. Then go ahead and press on the button that's on the top left corner of the screen and press on it again. Then press on this button. And over here, you'll see that you have the option to select any of the profiles that you have. Also, another thing people have been noticing here in iPadOS 17 is that when you open a website, it actually loads a lot quicker. And this might not be true for all people, but it is true for me. Now back in settings, there are also a couple other new features. And first off, in screen time, there's a new option called communication safety. And when you open it, you'll see it says here that messages can detect nude photos before they are sent or viewed on your child's device and provide guidance and age appropriate resources to help them make a safe choice. Apple does not have access to the photos. So basically, it's a feature for parents to prevent their child from seeing photos that might be inappropriate. Now the last feature I'm going to show you in settings is in the music section and basically the feature is called crossfade but whenever you open it you'll see that it'll crash so for now we don't really know anything about this feature but once the update comes out this feature should be fixed and we'll know more about it. Now there is still one other new feature in the music app and basically if we open it and we create a playlist we can actually collaborate with people on that playlist and you could do this by inviting some of your contacts and those contacts could either add or remove any songs they like. Now iOS 17 also comes with many iMessage improvements. First off, you could reply to a message simply by swiping right on it. And also, Apple fixed up autocorrect, so now it's going to be more accurate. And there were also issues with the dictation, so Apple fixed that as well. And one thing you should know is that this button now tracks the text that you're saying rather than the actual audio. And you also might have noticed this new plus icon. And basically, this is where all the stickers got moved. But also, this is where Apple moved their audio recorder to. And on top of that, there's also a new option here for stickers. And when you press on it, you'll be brought over here. And when you press on new sticker, it'll bring you to your photos. And you can create a sticker using the photos that you have. But also, Apple added a feature for emoji stickers. And right now, they don't work well, but once the update is released, they should work. So the last feature in iPadOS 17 is located in the Contacts app. And basically, when you edit a profile picture, then you'll see that the customization menu is sort of like the one on the lock screen. 
so you could create multiple wallpapers but you can only set one at a time. So there are a couple features that people expected to be added with the iPad OS 17 and first off there's the redesign control center and if I go into the control center you'll see nothing's really new here besides this new airplay button and another feature people expected to come with iPad OS 17 is the support for app side loading. Now, in case you didn't know about this, the European Union requires Apple to include app side loading before 2024, so you can expect for both app side loading and the redesigned control center to come to iOS sometime soon. So should you get iPad OS 17 on the third generation iPad Air? Well, my answer is it depends. If you want to get the beta version because it's not actually out yet, then it's all just your own personal preferences. Just keep in mind that there are some battery problems, and also many of the features do not actually work. Like for example, whenever you try to use the crossfeed feature on the music app, you'll see that it just crashes. And there is also lots of lag that comes with a beta update, so just be careful before downloading iPadOS 17 beta. So how do you get iPadOS 17 beta? Well, this is actually going to be a very simple process. All you need to do is go into Safari and search for beta.apple.com and then you'll be brought to this website. And then just scroll down to here and press on sign up if you don't have a developer account and press on sign in if you do. Then just go through all the steps and in the end you'll have iPadOS 17 beta. Now if you want to know whether or not to get iPadOS 17 on the third generation iPad Air, my suggestion is that you do get the update because there's very few downsides and even though there are problems such as the battery drain, they really shouldn't be that bad. And if you do regret updating, then you can watch the video in the description to downgrade back to iOS 16. Now that is it for the iPadOS 17 review on the third generation iPad Air. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.